Hi! In this video, I will share to you the principles and theories of normative ethics. So at the end of the discussion, students should be able to define normative ethics, learn the three normative theories, and differentiate various approaches to ethical decision making. So the word normative is an adjective which comes from the word norm, which means standard or rule. So moral norms are standards or principles with which people are expected to comply. So obviously, we people have different ideas about what the standards are. So the normative theories of ethics therefore focuses on what we claim as a moral actions, on what action are good and bad, and what kind of behavior is right. So the three normative theories we will be studying therefore illustrate three different sets of ideas about how we should live. So we have the ontology, consequentialism, and virtue ethics theory. Wherein, natural moral law and Kant's theory of the categorical imperative are some of the types of deontological theory. Fletcher situation ethics and utilitarianism are types of consequentialism. And Aristotle's virtue ethics is a type of virtue ethics theory. For now, we'll begin with the deontological theories. It comes from the Greek word deon, meaning obligation, necessity, or duty. So, deontology is sometimes referred to as the science of duty, wherein, generally speaking, those words, such as duty and obligations, tells you what your moral duties are. That is why, once people start telling you what duties you have, those duties form the basis of the moral rules. Deontological systems hold that the moral worth of an action lies in your conforming to duties and rules as opposed to considering the consequences of what you do. In other words, the principle of deontology is that you really have to conform to your moral duties regardless of the reason you have or the consequences you will be facing. Alongside obligations, duties, and rules, deontological theories also consider rights because your obligation to follow rules and duties implies that there is an intrinsic or the built-in value of doing so. Example, if you follow the rule do not murder, then you also have the right not to be murdered. So apart from the do not murder rule, we also have some rules who are common. We have the do not steal, do not lie, and you are off to keep your promise to be faithful to your spouse even if a more attractive person comes along. Which means, duty is not based on what is pleasant or beneficial but rather upon the obligation itself. Since the ontologist hold that acts are intrinsically right or wrong, then the rightness or wrongness of the act is in some sense built into the world and can be accessed by reason or by studying the world or for religious deontology by knowing the will of God. So in other words, we can only know whether our actions are right or wrong if we'll study the rules set by the world or by knowing the rules made by God. So this goodness that we are searching for is the reason why the ontologist emphasizes the importance of motive and intention in doing the act. When you say motive or intention, it is the reason for doing the action. Example of this is Immanuel Kant's deontological theory based on categorical imperatives or the commands that must be obeyed. So Immanuel Kant pointed out that an action was moral only if it was done in obedience to a rule. Other motives such as personal satisfaction were not counted. So example, a store owner who is kind to his customers not because he sees that as his moral duty but because he wants to have more customers. So in real life, the rule is for us to be kind because of the goodness of being kind. But in this situation, 
the store owner is kind because of his personal motive, which is the increase in customer or in sales. Therefore, the moral goodness from his action of being kind has been lost. Consequentialist theories of ethics hold that the moral worth of an action should be judged by its consequences. There are therefore situations where a consequentialist would be prepared to lie if that was thought necessary to bring about the best consequences. So a good or right action is one which produces the best consequences overall in the situation. So the best known consequentialist theory is utilitarianism where right actions are those which maximizes the happiness of sentient beings. When you say sentient beings, these are beings that can think, reason, feel, and experience. So happiness has different shades of meaning for different utilitarian. So can include pleasure, well-being, individual preferences, and individual interests. So although consequentialist theories are not focused on moral rules, they can be included also in the theory in which rules can be used to maximize the best consequences. So this follows because rules often become rules because historically they have been shown to produce the best consequences for society. Example for this is our ancestors who found out that having simple rules such as those prohibiting murder and theft usually led to a happier society. So let's differentiate consequential versus deontological. So when you say deontological theory, it focuses on the intrinsic value of the rule itself. But when you say consequential theory, it focuses on the value of the consequence of the rule. Example, lying. So in deontological theory, regardless of your reason, lying is always morally wrong. While in consequential theory, lying can be right if telling a lie would help save a person's life. Which means in this consequential theory, there are no right or wrong acts. So this consequential theory is a type of teleological theory. So what is teleological theory? Teleological derives from the Greek word telos, which means end, goal, or purpose. In ethics, the end, goal, or purpose which we seek referred to our responsibilities in attaining specific moral goals or ends. So for teleological ethical theories, if you want to find out how you should behave morally, you need to decide what the ultimate goal of ethics is. Teleological ethical theories can also be consequentialist because as well as being directed towards an ultimate goal or purpose, a teleological theory can also look to achieve the best consequence in any particular situation. So this will follow the simple reason that to achieve the best consequence in any particular situation will generally contribute to the overall goal. So let's differentiate deontological versus teleological. So we have here an example which is abortion. So in the teleological approach, saving the mother's life justifies the abortion process. While in the ontological approach, consider any termination of life as a violation of the rule and therefore would not abort the fetus regardless of the consequences to the mother. Next is the virtue ethics theory. In the deontological and consequentialist theories, we have noticed that they are both act-centered, which means we judge that specific acts whether they are good or bad, right or wrong. By contrast, virtue ethics is agent-centered, meaning that goodness is not in the act but in the person in which we judge the agent whether by habit and by character he is a good or virtuous person. So when you say virtues, these are attitudes or character traits that enables us to be and to act in these ways that develop this potential, which means principle teaches us 
that an action is only right if it is an action that a virtuous person would carry out in the same circumstances. So the goodness of the act is developed through good and virtuous people. So that's the end of the first part of our discussion. And these are my references in the making of this PowerPoint presentation. So I hope you watch the continuation of this topic so that you will better understand the normative ethical theories. So thank you and see you on my next video.